Creative Control once again acknowledges the support of FreshBooks, a cloud accounting software for small business owners with some truly thoughtful features that you'll love. Try it free for 30 days. Go to freshbooks.com slash creative control and in the how to you hear about us section, enter creative control. That's creative with a K and control with a K. Organize your money and get paid faster with FreshBooks. Are you hungry but don't know what to cook? HelloFresh Canada is here to help. Have a whole delicious meal's worth of wholesome ingredients plus a simple to follow recipe all delivered right to your Canadian home. There are vegetarian options and plans for single people and families too. I've tried this. It was great. Visit HelloFresh.ca for more information and menu options and use the promo code CREATIVE50. That's creative with a K, 50, for 50% off your first order. Coming to you live from the Transact in Toronto, Canada, it's Long Night with Vish Khanna. On tonight's show, we have Polaris Music Prize winner, Leo Pimienta. Comedian Sarah Hennessy is in the house. Say hello to music composer, Friendly Rich. The bicycles are our house band. My name is James Keese, and please welcome your host. He's taller than he sounds on the podcast, Vishal. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you for being here. We're at the Transac. The, it's like my second home. I miss the Transac. It's nice to be here for the uh, season premiere of Long Winter and uh, the season premiere of Long Night. And uh, it's nice to have you all here. I want to jump right in and tell you a little bit more about our guest tonight. Lido Pimenta is a Colombian Canadian interdisciplinary artist and musician whose album, La Papesa, won the 2017 Polaris Music Prize. Her work explores the politics of gender, race, motherhood, and diaspora. She is currently working on her next album, Miss Columbia, a cynical love letter to the people of her home country. How about a hand for Lido Pimienta? (laughs) Friendly Rich composed the music for three seasons of The Tom Green Show on MTV and just released his 11th studio recording, The Great Blue Heron, featuring Hoxley Workman and Kevin Bright. Please say hello to my friend and yours, Friendly Rich. Sarah Hennessy is a member of the acclaimed Toronto comedy collective Laugh Sabbath. She's a Canadian Comedy Award winner for Best Female Stand-Up, and her comedy album, Trouble in Saradice, reached number one on iTunes. She has uh, shot... uh, uh, tapings for Just for Laughs in Montreal, and she co-stars in the new CBC comedy digital series, Terrific Women. How about a round of applause for Sarah Hennessy? Hey. And over here, last but not least, uh, my sidekick and uh, your MC, James Keese, is the editor-in-chief of Exclaim Magazine and an NBA and comedy fanatic. How about a hand for James Keese? <laughs> Thank you. All right, we are. Uh, this is an amazing panel. I, I asked you all because uh, here tonight because I respect you. You're smart. You're funny. Yeah. You're talented, and I'm glad you're all here. I want to begin uh, by jumping in to talk about protesting. That's going to be our light entry into the night because I've I've noticed that there's been a lot of protesting around the world and uh, lately, and I've noticed that the left seems to have organized these uh, well attended marches. Hundreds of thousands of people feel galvanized around an issue, and they're protesting things like uh, assaults on human dignity and uh, oil pipelines and women's rights and health care. But meanwhile, over the last week in America, Fox News commentator Sean Hannity encouraged people to boycott companies like Keurig for pulling their sponsorship of his show, and everyone's just smashed coffee machines, which I thought was weird. (laughs) And so I know that there's... You know, Rich, I know for a fact, for those who don't know, Rich, you organize gatherings of people. You, mm. you, you've you organized the odd protest. Is that fair? Yeah. yeah. Y- yes. Yes, you have. Yes. It is. You're a fan of, of, of the spectacle uh, uh, of parades and, and, and whatnot. Right. Do you feel like sometimes 
the substance gets lost in the spectacle these days. Oh, boy. I mean, when I was doing a lot of those early protests, they weren't really protests. It was it was gatherings and weirdo kind of um, coming together. I think I think parades or any of that, of that sort can come together for many different reasons. Right. right? So um, what you're saying is, it, is it kind of getting lost is is is. Is it just getting lost? Is there, is there almost too much noise? The parade I ran was called, ironically, the Parade of Noises. It was celebrating noise. Right. Yeah. It, you can get <laughs> carried away. You can get swept away in, in, the, in the vibe of it all, yeah. right? Because it's certainly, it's breaking the norm, which is great. And I think in any context, uh, a good parade or a good protest goes a long way. Well, do you, do you, do, does anyone here have a sense of why we're why people seem compelled to protest now. Well, I think with the, the Keurig Brewers, <laughs> it's a hard thing to say. It is. Keurig Brewers, Car- anyways, <laughs> I think that a lot of people were looking for a reason to smash theirs, and they <laughs> and they weren't sure what was going on, and so they're like, you know what, I'm going to smash mine, make a, a hot viral vid, but then they didn't realize that by them smashing it, they're actually supporting, uh, uh, you know, some, I guess a child molester in a weird yeah. way, and yeah. then they're probably, a lot of people probably didn't pay attention to that. They're like, great, great opportunity opportunity for me to get rid of this thing <laughs> i know it's bad for the environment you know it's so if there is a lot of conflicting things and i think there is a lot of uh people want to jump on board to make a fun viral vid sometimes but they're not thinking about why they're doing it necessarily and then uh you know yeah, that's what i think I'm, i think i bet there are a certain amount of people who got lost in that yeah i get lost in it sometimes because i get lost in the viral vids i forget what the issue was even i can't remember why people are even angry about whatever on either side, even if I agree, I'm just like, what's going on? What's happening? Yeah. Lito, I know you encourage people. You try to empower people to express their beliefs. What do you make of this current climate where people are voicing their opinions with boycotts and, and, and public protest? I think it's great. I okay. think that protesting is very important and necessary. On either side? Well, it is important when what I call the closeted white supremacists or the closeted KKK enthusiasts come out with their tiki torches Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it is important that they are visible because then people like me doesn't have to or we don't have to be like you need to believe me there is this group of people Mm -hmm. out there and people are like nah nah, really and then did you see the tiki torches (laughs) so yes it is important i mean i can't be um you know, like I'm preaching self-expression and da 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 da. So people need to be able to to protest. And also, I mean, the when people are or when white supremacists are protesting or when there's a protest for something that is meaningless, people are not gonna turn up, and it's not lit, and it's like the, yeah. it's like it's a, it's a joke on themselves. That's like, that's where I'm. That's getting, what That's it is, what I'm getting know? to. I think some of it seems laughable. Some of it seems sub- substantive, but it's interesting that people we're just laughing at people with tiki torches and their coffee machines, but they're angry. They're so angry. Well, they are angry and they are dangerous. Yes. And they belong to a group of people that are very powerful. So that's when we can laugh for a little bit, but then we actually need to take it seriously. That's, that's the other side of it. Like It's hard. I think I totally agree with you. This is why you're on the panel. You're smarter than me. I do think... That's what I, I think that's what I meant by the distraction. Because I feel like we get so caught up in the coffee machine thing, which as Sarah pointed out, they were right to destroy their coffee machines. Well. Those environment destroying <laughs> coffee pod machines. Yes and no. I don't know. That's not exactly what I meant totally. Are you pushing for a sponsorship? Yeah. <laughs> Who's not these days? No, I'm not. I just, I just, I even there was like that campaign where ever, you know, people, people have campaigns and then people just do it for the video, but they're not actually putting money towards a cause or yeah. helping a cause in any way. That's yeah. the problem, I'd say. Yeah, I agree. I agree. James, uh, do you have any thoughts on this topic? I mean, we, you and I are immersed in, in comedy uh, and so... Part of what inspired my question or this topic was just watching comedians destroy some of these protests. And they seem to do it mostly particularly on the right. Um, do you have any insight here? Well, I think it's uh, curious that on the, I mean, on the left, there's a long tradition of protest and, and you know, there, there are songs that are handed down from generation rhymes that every child learns from their parents. Sure, yeah. Uh, and, and when you have these people who are have, have you know, been in a p- position of privilege their entire lives, and then they get super mad about something, they, they literally don't know how to protest, so they break their own stuff that they've paid for. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, 
they're mad about the NFL. They're burning their own season tickets to yeah. games like that cost a lot of money. Yeah, that's they're gonna smash their expensive. I'm like, you guys really need to get your shit together on the protest. Like, it's not you know, don't spit on your own kitchen floor. Like, it, yeah. it's weird that they they just fundamentally misunderstand the premise on some level. Yeah, it does seem like some people don't know how to protest properly. Yeah, no. that's what I mean. It's very strange. They're like, ah! But it takes a lot of gumption to put it all together. Like, uh, those to have, are... To have, you know, sentient thoughts <laughs> and, like, an idea about what makes sense. That does yeah. take a lot. Logical consistency. Yeah. You know? And uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. to, to mobilize... I don't know. It's a, it, it, it is like a Monty Python episode. Some of those early p parades that we would do, like yeah, to close down a street. That's took, true. Like, permits. You know, six You're talking about of, permits now. City six <laughs> levels of government. But I I used to call it constructive anarchy, and that's what drove me back then. It it it, it was around nine eleven, and it was like you know just seeing a, a lot of these early forms of terror kind of pop up, and we were trying to make a statement of, you know, in your hometown, you can make a noise and choose the noise yeah. that you want to make. And there was a lot of thought behind it, but it was, it was fundamentally driven by this concept of constructive anarchy, which is, you know, coming together and breaking a bit of the norm. Let's, let's, let's bring that up. Breaking a bit of the norm to, uh, to, I think, hopefully instill a bit of change that's positive in the end, right? Yeah. Like yeah. that, that was an early motivator for, for, for a lot of the work I was doing. Yeah. That. Well, speaking of efficacy, I want to talk about the Me Too campaign because I have actually been surprised by how uh, impactful this campaign has been. Um, we've seen women and men feel empowered enough to speak out about uh, past indiscretions, uh, uh, things they experienced that, that damaged them. We've seen prominent people, um, mostly men, lose their livelihoods, at least temporarily. This is all fresh, right? I've never seen anything like this. Um, and it's a phenomenon. It's got... it's. It's got rage. It's got sadness. Like for me, and I know a lot of people were upset when people would say things like this, but like I admired some of these people deeply and to watch them crumble in front of me is strange. Again, Lido, I know that you are immersed in this, this world of encouraging people to speak out. What do you make of what's happening right now? I know you say protest is good. This is a form of protest, I suppose, but this notion that people feel so empowered to speak out right now, what do you think is going on? To me, it's interesting. I mean, I believe survivors. I support survivors. I encourage survivors to speak, to speak up and to tell their truth. And I totally understand what people, when people don't feel comfortable by speaking up and, and saying it because it sometimes can be dangerous, and I understand that. With the Me Too campaign, my criticism and what I was observing is that women of color have been saying this. We have been saying this. We have been reporting police sexually assaulting black women, pregnant black women in jail. We've, we've been saying this. We've been denouncing police in Quebec, raping indigenous women, and nothing happens. We've been saying this. So one white woman in Hollywood speaks up, and then it inspires a whole generation. One man, spe uh, you know, one lead singer of a band sees someone groping someone in the audience and, and then that video goes viral because they're the heroes, right? So mm. to me, it's a long time coming and I am glad, I love it. I, I have a diary of all the powerful gatekeepers in Hollywood that are, you know, are being outed by their peers. I think it's great. I think it's a celebration and I hope it doesn't stop in Hollywood and I hope that it encourages people in high schools to out their teachers that are doing this stuff to them. I hope that it, 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 it makes people in Toronto, in the music industry in Toronto, because we all know who the motherfuckers are. We all know who they are. We all know who the violent um, men are. So hopefully, you know, it just makes people talk about it more. Yeah. 
but you know the criticism is that you know it has to happen at at a level like a hollywood level so that the rest of us who have been saying it and screaming it for the last 30 years you know to maybe have a chance at being heard or believed right no that's fair that's totally fair sarah have you been uh, impacted by this phenomenon in any way i'll throw to sarah now <laughs> I'm hey sure. everybody! Um, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, the, it's it's just the 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 sheer numbers. Uh, yeah, they've been uh, exi they've existed forever, and it's the one thing that I'm kind of looking at is how much a lot of us are conditioned to not acknowledge it, and then when it, when everybody was, you know, uh, saying it like it. Um, it, it, just, it just helps to shine. It, like I know everybody's been trying to shine a light on it forever, so it, it's nice that it's actually in the forefront of everybody's minds now. Like you can't deny it when everybody yeah. you know says it. And um, and now I feel like it, it sets something, it finally sets something off and people are being pulled out of their <laughs> out of their shadows and, and their jobs are being taken away because they've enjoyed um, taking whatever they wanted people and doing whatever they want to them for so long. So yeah, it's a. Uh, I think that it's it's overall a, a good thing, and that's uh, it seems to be some changes happening, which is good. Yeah, but it is bad that it, it didn't happen sooner, and it's and it's bad that a lot of people weren't uh, haven't been like you aren't believed for so long, and they're like I've been telling you this forever. But it's also still bad because what what's the worst thing that's gonna happen to to Kevin Spacey is that he doesn't get hired to be in any movie anymore. But it does not affect his bank account, right? Like to me, I feel like we need to take it to that next level of there will be financial repercussions because I feel like people in power at that level of power, the only thing that they care about is their money because their money is what allows them to continue this behavior and be protected by the people that work under them. I, I've. From my observation, it has been interesting to see that it is primarily people's livelihoods that have been s taken from them when they are uh, when these allegations surface because they're basically I think it's a way of taking away the power dynamic. They they have risen to this power level. They've been able to ab abuse people and 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 behave this way because they possess a certain amount of po power because of their status and well, now we're seeing like almost every week someone is having their status taken away from them. So they can't do this again, ideally. Mm, yeah, but I feel like no, like you're saying, no real change will ever happen until people's money are t is taken away. Okay, so not future money. They're, they're, they're every all of it. Yeah, <laughs> all of the money all and the, the, and their money from the past. Yeah, because like if I'm Kevin Spacey, Back to the future. if I'm Kevin Spacey, <laughs> oh snap, <laughs> it's all out there. Well. I'll just buy an island. Right. Bye. Yeah, peace out. Yeah. Right, he's like Scrooge McDuck. He's, <laughs> he has like a pool full of coins. So. Yeah, it's like... <laughs> what did you make of their... Like, Spacey in particular was... Uh, his reaction was so fucked up, if I might say. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any thoughts on that? Does anyone have any right. thoughts on how he actually dealt with this situation? By the For those who don't know, he, he essentially um, quasi-apologized, but also used it as an opportunity to come out. Right. Um, <laughs> as gay and then thus throwing a whole community under the bus he was with him i guess um does anyone have any thoughts do you, is anyone here a kevin spacey fan before this no i always thought he was kind of a <laughs> i always thought he was kind of a dick this is the other thing it's yeah. like when you have when you have a so when you're a fan of somebody it's like even as a comedian you know i was so pumped that i got to do some shows with louis ck a few years ago yeah. and then now i'm like well i guess i'll delete those photos off of instagram <laughs> <laughs> you know, because yeah. they're like shit, man. And we did hear a bit about it. Like you did hear, you did hear rumors. So right. it's this is just despicable. I feel for all of us. I feel so stupid. Well, and then there's the whole political. Like, I mean, these public figures are being taken down. But look mm. at what's happening with this Roy Moore guy in Alabama, where his whole political party is not is not like denouncing him. Really, I mean, some members are, but they mm. want a tax plan. They're choosing politics and policy over morality. That's also not good, I would say. <laughs> I would put forth the argument that that's not good. And, and, and again, like that's another example of someone, their power is not really being taken away from them at this point, and it's crazy. Like It's just crazy. And this is why 
I think we laugh at these situations as well because you can't do anything else. Don't you find? Like, and you're totally right. They're going to go to an island and just read a lot and hopefully uh, make some... But don't throw reading in with all of this. Reading is con- yeah, right. right, right. <laughs> I was hoping to say solid contribution. <laughs> I mean, where, you know... Reading is good. I don't think they'll be reading. Reading is great. Yeah. Reading, sorry. Um, they, they're going to go to an island. They could pay someone to read to them. Yeah. Thank you. Still... They'll you know. pay someone to read to them. Yeah. They'll, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Okay, we got to take a break. We got to take a commercial break. Oh, sorry, Rich, do you have something more you uh, want to say? However, you know, the when Me Too happened, someone I know posted on uh, on one of the social medias saying something to the effect of, uh, oh, come on, Gian Gomez. When, when it happened with Gian, they said, uh, I, I posted my rent then. No way to me too, man. It's going to keep happening. And I get it. I get why you'd be against. But since me too has happened, pay attention to what's been going on. Change is happening. Things are crumbling. Yeah. You know, it's like I actually believe that uh, this point right here today where we are right now, change does come. It does come over time, right? Yeah. It's not the same as when Gion. Gion was our little... Dirty canary in the coal mine, right? And I think also it happened in Canada. So right, no, exactly. And a tumbleweed rolls by. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. Boring. All right, on. <laughs> we're gonna be right back. Uh, we got a sponsor. We got a sponsor message from a fine Canadian company, and then uh, we'll be right back with more. Stick around for more long night with each Connor. <laughs> Promotional consideration is brought to you by HelloFresh Canada. Visit HelloFresh.ca for more information and menu options and use the promo code CREATIVE50, all one word and creative is with a K, CREATIVE50 for 50% off your first order. Also, FreshBooks, a cloud accounting software for small business owners. Go to FreshBooks.com slash creative control and in their how did you hear about us section, use the promo code creative control. Creative with a K, control with a K, all one word, and you will get to try Fresh Books for 30 days for free. All right. We are back. We're back on Long Night, and uh, we have a fine panel here, and I want to read some things out loud to you that were in the news recently um, because I think I, I, what I want to talk about is men who think they're funny. Uh, I've been one of these men, but not to this extent. I want to read you two stories that uh, uh, came out this, uh, this, uh, over the last week. This is from a CNN article. Shortly after Leanne Tweeden went public with allegations that Al Franken had groped her during a USO tour through the Middle East in 2006, the Minnesota Democrat released a statement. I certainly don't remember the rehearsal for the skit in the same way, but I send my sincerest apologies to Leanne, said Franken. As to the photo, it was clearly intended to be funny, but it wasn't. I shouldn't have done it. So for those who don't know, uh, this just happened two days ago. Uh, Senator Al Franken, former uh, SNL writer and best-selling author, uh, really a great satirist uh, uh, from America. He... uh, in, uh, like I said, in 2006, apparently he was on a USO tour with this um, anchor person, Leanne Tweeden, and she's just this week accused him of, uh, of basically writing a script in which he was permitted to kiss her, and she didn't want to be doing that. And then while she was sleeping on a plane, he posed for a photo where it appeared to he was groping her breasts. Uh, don't do any of those things. It was very bad. It was very terrible. And a, a lot of people are very upset about it. So he said it was clearly intended to be funny, but it wasn't. This is an article about uh, Louis C.K. Uh, that appeared in the New York Times, I believe it was on November 9th. In 2002, a Chicago comedy duo, Dana Min Goodman and Julia Wolof, landed their big break, a chance to perform at the U.S. Comedy Arts Festival in Aspen, Colorado. When Louis C.K. invited them to hang out in his hotel room for a nightcap after their late night show, they did not think twice as soon as they sat down in his room, still wrapped in their winter jackets and hats, Louis C.K. asked if he could take out his penis, the woman said. They thought it was a joke and laughed it off. And then he really did it, Miss Goodman said in an interview with the New York Times. He proceeded to take all of his clothes off and get completely naked and started masturbating. 
Later on in the same piece, during Miss Goodman and Miss Wallace's surreal visit to Louis C.K.'s Aspen Hotel room, they said they were holding on to each other, screaming and laughing in shock as Louis C.K. masturbated in a chair. We were paralyzed, Miss Goodman said. After he ejaculated on his stomach, they said they fled. He called after them. He was like, which one is Dana and which one is Julia? Miss Goodman recalled. So the women here are so shocked they laugh at Louis. They don't know what else to do. He ends the incident by making a joke about how he doesn't even know which one of them is which. Okay, so I read all this because I'm a tremendous fan of comedy. I feel like this is a comedy problem as much as it could be anything else. These two gentlemen did something that they construed as a joke, I think. I, I, I don't, Louis doesn't say this, but clearly he tries to make a joke. So, Sarah. Hey guys. <laughs> you cool. Are, yeah. What do you want to talk about? <laughs> I am curious about your perspective on this. It seems to me that in these two instances, comedy is now under scrutiny. And the lengths to which a man will go to get a laugh, that's kind of what I saw in this a little bit. I, I don't feel, know. I feel like it's been a defense for everybody. Oh, I was just trying to be funny. It's, people use, you use it yeah. ever since you were a kid. You know yeah. what I mean? If you get in trouble for anything, you're like, oh, it was supposed to be a joke. It was supposed to be funny. It's a defense mechanism. But um, there's also, there's, you can, I don't know, you interpret as you will. Like, it, obviously, it's not funny, and they can say they're trying to be funny, but I think what we all know is they're being demeaning and just uh, thinking they can do whatever they wanted to another human being. I like jokes. I like comedy. Yeah, those I aren't, like those aren't, all right, both of those are not no, cool jokes. No. I think we can all agree that those are not good or cool jokes. Yeah, they're not. And, and But I do think that uh, as comedians, there's a certain desperation to get a laugh to seem like you're doing something completely edgy. This is totally not on that level, but mm -hmm. what a lot of people did was they looked at Louis's material mm -hmm. from his act yeah. and said, hey, if you follow his act, this is right in line with the kind of behavior they're describing. And I was then, because I appreciated <laughs> that material. I would, I've seen Louis many times. You said you played shows with him. Mm -hmm. It gets into a weird situation where like, you're making, and again, I'm not defending these guys. Of course. But I do think like we're in a situation where people are building cases against people by their art. And, um, and then what does that say about the art? And what does that say about me for liking the art? It's put me in a weird position. But the know? art can be anything it needs to be, I think, on stage. The difference is he, the, he made that happen. He made that shit happen in, in real life. Yeah. And that, that's where, no, 100% not. Yeah. People say awful things on stage and we do it. Because sometimes you can get an even bigger laugh if you say something so messed up, yeah. right? Or some audiences don't like that, and you're like, well, didn't work here. But mm -hmm. the thing, the big difference is you don't do those things in real life. You're just trying to, you know what I mean? Like, that's, yeah. those, aren't, those aren't jokes, what he did. Th yeah. That's all harassment. <laughs> yeah, 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 and uh, those aren't jokes. Um, but maybe, perhaps he did uh, get off in a weird way that he did like lay tracks in his uh, in his uh, material, you know. And so now people are going back, being all like, ah, "I'm a detective. Look how all these different clues he left for us." He did like doing those things, like, and I just and I remember his joke, you know, about like you know from one of his old specials about like. <laughs> I don't know it's always about jerking <laughs> off, right? A lot of but, like, comedy is about jerking off for he, some reason, and he yeah. loves it. But I think you're asking, are you're asking is is it funny? Is that? <laughs> yeah, I, I well, no, I'm not asking if this is funny. Yeah. I just wonder if I almost wonder if comedy is in a bit of trouble. We are in a place where we've talked about a few very serious things here. And people do write off offensive behavior. I think assholes jokes. are in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I think. I think. I think what you were saying, Lita, earlier. Like, I think. I think music. I think any other art. I. I, I think business. I think any other of, uh, avenue has this. If yeah. you're Just, not, you like, if you're doing bad things, and you yeah, know, you're, but put. I also think that. I'm, you know, and been in the comedy scene for 15 years. There's plenty of wonderful comedians who are not monsters, <laughs> and I think our our um, comedy careers are doing great. And yeah. there's just more. Mm -hmm. I, in fact, I think the taste level is, is changing. I think now yeah. it's like the climate is changing. So there's going to be there's more of a d demand for projects that we all feel good about laughing at, and like uh, different areas of comedy we want to explore. And and it's great because. Uh, that now, when I'm in a writer's room, you know, like, do you know how many times I've been in a writer's room and I'm the, I'm literally the token girl because they had to hire a girl because it looks good? You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. I'm so excited to not be in that situation and just be 
<laughs> you know what I mean? And not have to like sit back and be like, <laughs> yeah, it is cool that you yelled at your wife. Like, I don't know, like, not that I would say, but like, you know what I mean? Like, we don't have to sit back and, and decide what we get to speak out uh, against and what's a joke and what's not a joke. It's now it's easier to say, that's not funny than ever, you know? And that's yeah. a great thing because there's so many things that are funny that everybody can agree on. Yeah. It's a subjective art form, though, as well. Yeah. And I, I think I am speaking a bit to the current climate because if you actually, like I do sometimes, I'll put on an old record that I like, uh, say, by NWA. And then I'll be like, oh, in this current frame, like, it's very hard for me to listen to this now. Yes. It's yeah. like whenever I watch 80s movies, I love 80s movies, and then I'm like, oh, shit. Like, they say some racist stuff pretty easily in those 80s movies, even though the music and the fashion is pretty sweet. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then you have to balance it out. You're like, should I be enjoying this? And then you're like, I don't enjoy that, but I notice that I do talk about it with lots of people because it's something that we like, and we like to look at, like, you know, vintage fashion or, like, retro style and stuff, but, like... You're like that joke. Even jokes from in TV shows from like f a couple years ago won't fly now. And isn't it amazing how quickly things are changing? Well, I, we, go ahead. I was gonna say I can't wait to watch all that shit again with Kevin Spacey edited out of all those. Oh things. my god! Gonna, be, I'm pumped that they're great. doing that. Christopher Plummer instead. Is that the <laughs> yeah, plan? Yeah, amen. Yeah. yeah. I hope there's some trip. obvious green screen stuff because we'll all be into that. Like yeah. I hope you well, see some green and stuff. <laughs> Did you know Christopher Plummer was Kaiser Sose? No, I didn't know that. That's yes, now, happen. baby. Thank you. Well done. We were talking about livelihoods being destroyed, and Alito was saying, you know, that's not enough. It is, again, fascinating to me that, particularly when, when Cosby, when Bill Cosby went down uh, hard, people, they, there was an erasure of his show. But didn't. He didn't, win. That's he didn't where go I was down. Yeah. He's well, not, oh, sorry, uh, that's I mean. true. That's true. Uh, on some level, he, that's true. You're right. But Louis, the same thing happened with Louis. Basically, everyone cut it off, and now... Uh, as a good person, I can't go back to those specials anymore. A whole body of work is is gone, uh, and that's 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 a strange thing. It's a too. weird feeling, but it's also you're like, eh, let's let's just throw it in the fire and start a new. <laughs> start a new, yeah. <laughs> well, that's yeah. the thing. Like the tragedy of of CK mm -hmm. is that the core, the core, the the most interesting thing that he had to say was that men are number one, are women's number one problem, or women's yeah, that's number a joke one of his. thing. Yeah. So that was the real tragedy because that, then the second thing that he uses in his comedy are his daughters. Yeah. So that's the, the second tragedy that this man, father to two young women that will most likely have what he did to these comedians happen to them, mm. and that they know because Kids like my son, nine years old, he has his own iPad. And if he wants, he'll wake up in the middle of the night and he'll read whatever. So as I can only imagine as, as Louis C.K.'s daughters being like, what yeah. did my dad do? Yeah. And waking up in the middle of the night while your parents are asleep and, and, and reading all this stuff. That's a, the second tragedy. The, the third tragedy about this guy is that demonizing masturbation when masturbation for a lot of people are their only opportunity at sexual release, are their only opportunity to feel good about themselves. Also, to me, masturbation is a practice of self-care. So I cannot have Louis C.K. demonizing the practice of touching yourself. So those, that, those are like, to me, that's like the, wow, the, the, the three tragedies. On top of that, in addition to that, I... F <laughs> <laughs> Let's just take a moment. Let's just take a moment. Lido's son wielding the applause sign. A very strange uh, moment happened there. I am, I am <laughs> raising a intersectionalist feminist right there. Yeah. Um, so another thing that is important to know is, you know, like... I feel like, and I, and I say this all the time, you know, and I get criticized and online people t tell me horrible things when I say this, but I feel like male musicians, male performers, they should like all the festivals starting in 2018, they should all be, they should be 99.9% .9 female or female identifying folk led and then 1% men until we catch up and we're all equal and, and leveled up. And it should extend to all of the industries. And 
comedy. Comedy. I can tell you hmm. ten comedi ten male comedians right now, but I cannot mm. tell you maybe one trans comedian. Yeah. And I mean, like, I consume Netflix, and most of the comedy specials that are of women are white women, and a lot of white women that aren't funny, right? So right now we have, like, <laughs> Tiffany Haddish. It's just like coming out, yeah. right? And it's like, okay, just like Tiffany, ha there's twenty thousand Tiffany Haddishes out there, mm -hmm. and there's twenty thousand Latin, indigenous, and we don't know. So there is room for all of these voices. So to me, when, when the Louis C.K.'s fall, even Dave Chappelle, I was so excited for Dave Chappelle to come in the Netflix thing and all I saw was transphobic jokes. Yeah. It was so disappointing. It was like my childhood was, was, was shattered. My like this man who I thought was, you know, a saint to me, this stupid jokes, like really, in our times, it could be wonderful what Dave Chappelle will have to say. And then he opens his mouth and he's just garbage. So to me, get rid of the men in comedy <laughs> and give, give voices, like get all this, or get all this, this, this men out. Because in comedy, in music, we are the butt of the joke. Women are the butt of yeah. the joke. It is so easy. It's so easy to make fun of a woman. So until we as a generation as a people stop laughing at that you know this this gonna continue this yeah. super boring jokes like if they're not intelligent right so the Louis CK mm. Louis CK entered this realm of he is intelligent because he is a parent it's like no he's a predator and just like him all of them are gonna fall yeah yeah Well, we don't have a lot of time uh, left on the show, and uh, Lido, you have uh, been in the news lately, so I need to go to you. I know you just uh, <laughs> exhausted yourself, but um, I'm loving the footwork. Yeah, it's good. It's it's, it's it's very good. You have been uh, some of the things you just talked about. You've been addressing them at your shows. Something happened in Halifax recently. You've been on a lot of uh, info wars. <laughs> Have you been? I'm on Infowars. <laughs> That's right. I am on Infowars because I am racist. <laughs> Can you explain to people why you're racist? <laughs> yes. <laughs> what happened in Halifax that turned you into such a giant racist? Okay, who here has been to a Leo Pimienta show before? <laughs> okay, so what ha happened was. Um, <laughs> October 19th, Brandon's birthday. We're in Halifax. Happy this birthday, festival Brandon. Called yeah. Halifax Pop Explosion. Everything is beautiful. 20 minutes into our set, we, see, we hear a ruckus. And I look to my, to my left, and there's this white girl with a camera. Why do you hate me because I'm white? Like screaming, like at that level. Linda Blair level. Yeah. <laughs> It was, yeah, she, I don't know what was wrong with her. And I'm just like, who's fighting? Just stop. I don't have time because, you know, you have 45 minutes yeah. and I like to be on time. And then I didn't see her again. Then two days go by and then I open my email and then I have thousands of emails that begin with monkey cunt, Whoa. black monkey cunt, r how dare you be racist? Hmm, that's weird. I'm gonna check my next message. Maybe it'll be my mother. Huh. No, it wasn't my mother. It was Jake from Virginia, <laughs> who wasn't at Halifax at the time, wasn't at my show. Why do you segregate the people? And they called this photographer. Her name is Kate Giffen. Rosa Parks, she's Rosa Parks, she's a Rosa Parks. Basically, this is what happens when you go to a Little Pimienta show. If you're at a, if I'm at a theater and you pay for your seat, I'm not gonna tell you to go nowhere. But if I'm in Halifax where there's 800 people capacity and we're at capacity and you know that people are there, there's like a thousand people in there. And I'm on stage 
and I see all the women that are hype because I'm here for the girls. Everyone knows I'm here for women. So they're hype. They're ready to get to the front because I get up and I'm, okay, I'm going to need all the mans to go to the back. And the man, oh, I don't want to, okay. And then they go. Some don't want to move and I'm like, you must feel like a woman inside. It's okay. <laughs> and that's cool. And then I need the women to come to the front and they're hype. They're lit because they know, at least in this show, no one is going to touch their butt. No one's going to touch their hair. No one's going to touch their boobs. No one's going to be like, hey, you want a drink? No one is going to talk to them. They're going to be able to look at the music, look at me, take photos, lit. And then I ask for the white women to stand behind the women of color. In Halifax, this is not a secret. We know the history of Halifax in Nova Scotia. We know how segregated actually the community is there. So I asked the 15 that I counted, the 15 women of color, including two spirit indigenous trans women in the audience, 15 women of color out of 800 people, please come to the front of the stage. The women, the white women that were there, you know what they did? Fuck you! Yeah! That's what they did. They were so happy about it. Because those are my bitches. <laughs> and they came up, literally. So the stage is from this corner all the way to, I don't know, the fucking, like, over there. And so the 15 women, they were just, just right in front of me right here. In the middle of the set, this woman starts screaming. She's a photographer. The photographer, the media is on the right side. So I'm confused, like, why is this girl over here? The girl, the, the photographers go here. Okay, I guess you want your photo, that's fine. <laughs> if she would have said, I only want to take a photo, just can I just have two minutes? Respectfully, you respect the audience, you respect the people around you. The women at the front would have been, of course. But the problem was that I saw with my eyes was that she was shoving and pushing and screaming and crying why do you hate me because I'm white? Don't you know who I am? Don't you know who I am? I work here. I work here. I can be here. So if anyone would ever say that to you, what do you do? What do you do? You tell her, get out. If anyone, black, yellow, blue, green, does that to anyone in my audience and I see it, I call them out and they got to go. And they left. This woman left. No idea who she is. And then the next day I get text from my friends and be like, you know, this girl is texting all of us saying that you kicked her out because she was white. And I'm like, that makes no sense. And then I get another text from her community being like, we just want to apologize because this woman is known in the community for being very violent. And I'm like, oh, really? Oh, yeah. And then they send me a photo of this woman, this photographer in blackface, in blackface. I have pictures in my phone of this bitch in blackface. Do you think that this white princess, Canadian princess, that was demonized by Lilo Pimienta, victimized, our white Rosa Parks, mm. do you think she's getting, you're a monkey, cunt, you should kill yourself? Do you think that she's getting cartoons with instructional drawings on how to kill yourself? No, she's not. She's getting Infowars, sending solidarity to the White Rosa Parks. This is what happened. To this day, if you go in my social media, if you go in my social media, it's ridiculous because, I mean, this is when humor comes in mm. because they don't even know how to spell. Like, to me, that's the most frustrating part. I'm like, <laughs> oh my God. Like, I wrote something up, something like, you know, there was some people that said we need to give space or, or some other band was like women to the front. And I was like, this is so great to make space for women. Mm -hmm. When I write women, I write women instead of woman with an A, I write it with an X because that is how you include all kinds of women. So right. to me, that's exclusive vocabulary. So I get this piece of shit right back to me and say, what did he say, Sari? <laughs> Can you... You spelt woman wrong. Spelt. Like the, like the bread. And I'm like, ah. It's hard when you're sexist. You know what Racist I'm saying? is also dumb. It's hard. It's just like, to me, you know, I, 
I'm glad that I'm able to laugh at this now, but yeah. like I was just yeah. on tour in Europe and every I got out of like I played in Amsterdam, great show, and I leave the show and I'm in the van crying all my way from the venue to the hotel. Because I can't believe that I'm on InfoWars and I can't believe that there's so many YouTube videos that these people are doing, like great cameras and everything, <laughs> great sound and everything. Like I'm gonna need people who love and support me to show me the same amount of love than the people that hate me do. <laughs> because it's incredible. I just don't understand how do you have the time. Like I am a parent. I don't have time to be online. I don't have time to create five different fake accounts so that I can message you from my, fav my, 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 my five fake accounts that you're a racist. I'm getting gifts, okay, of black women being like or having sex or like doggy style by a white man and my face on it. I'm getting pictures of my face of a woman giving head to some guy, but then they put my face on it. I'm getting photos of like trailer park, whatever, like the tropes of like the 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 fat like white dude in the overalls with the straw coming out, you know, and the and the hat, Jim Bob, whatever. And then they have that picture, and then next to that picture. It's a picture of me in my overalls saying, who wore it best? Look at this fat, monkey, cunt, racist. Every day since the 20th of October. And it doesn't seem to go away. But this is what happened. I mean, I'm making space for my people. Because when I'm in here, when I'm in here, I can say, well, that's my brother over there. Okay, that's my sister over there. You know what I'm saying? Because I am a fucking immigrant and we're on colonized land. And if we don't talk about it, if we don't talk about colonization and unsettler colonialism, we're not going to get ahead. We're not going to go ahead. We're not going to get better in Canada. It's not going to happen. So when I'm inviting brown women to the front, I'm not saying that I hate white women. That's not what I'm saying. Of course not. White people are in my life every day. They do their laundry in my house. Hey, sorry, all white people do laundry in your house? A lot! You don't understand. My, my white friends, they don't get along with their parents, so they think I'm their mom. And I'm a very motherly person, so I take it on, and I'm like, okay, sure. Yeah. Okay. All they have to do is take the garbage downstairs and babysit my son. It works out fine. It's a good, it's a good deal. He knows. Well, does anyone else have anything to add? Uh, just, just, just a quick thing in, listen, in listening. And I really, I mean, it's I, just. I'm sorry, I'm talking so much. It's no, just that no, every no. statement that I've given and every like the national whatever, I've been so yeah. constrained and like trained to like be polite, be Canadian. Yeah. Like I have to be Canadian, and I'm just like, oh, you're sick and tired of being Canadian. I'm glad that it's you have Canadians a forum on the show. Canadians don't know how to express themselves. <laughs> this has prompted something. I, I suppose right. that's true. I, I, I wonder I wonder if um you know one of the glues in Canada Swiss Chalet, right? And what I'm thinking right, we can we agree on this. Because of the sauce? Of course because of the sauce. Let me let me finish, Granddad Granddad's donuts. This is a weird segue. Yeah, I, I know what what I was thinking while while you were speaking, Lito, is have you had any contact with the photographer? Like to sit down yeah. over a dinner, a and, and a, a a a preferably yeah. at a Swiss chalet and the bonding chicken. Because it's neutral? Yeah. She is probably is that an opportunity? very scared of me, as she should be, because if I ever run into her, it's not going to end pretty. And hopefully my man will be with me to like stop me from what I will do to her, because it will not be a perfect Canadian behavior of what, I, what she deserves. Like, you're a black face enthusiast, yeah. racist-ass piece of shit that disturbed a beautiful show. If you see videos from that show, yeah. the joy, the happiness, the happiness that my show, the empowerment that my show brings yeah. to men, to men. Yes. Like, I get messages from men being like, whoa, I didn't realize that I was such an asshole. <laughs> And I just want to <laughs> thank you. And I'm like, that's what's up. That's what's up. I am good. Yeah. You know? Amen. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you don't deserve me. <laughs> Shit. I'm trying.
trying, I'm actually trying to figure out, I'm trying to figure out, I'm trying to figure out an app or something that for every racist, cunt, monkey, looking, whatever, for every time that someone says that, if I get $100 deposited in my account, like I just feel like if I can figure that out, I would really be excited about this situation. <laughs> okay, okay. Listen, we are out of time. I, 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 there's nothing more to really add there except uh, I would like to get each of you on the panel. Oh, well, actually, first of all, how about a round, for our a round of applause for our panel? <laughs> I hope you guys had fun and you learned Thank stuff. You. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. Thank you so much. I'd like each of you to tell people about your latest work or project or whatever you want people to learn, uh, where they can learn more about you. But also, because we couldn't get to everything here, can you mention one thing uh, that you think more people should be talking about? More one thing that you think more people should be talking about. Now, Lito, you've been quiet. Do you want to start? Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Does anyone uh, want to say anything? Uh, James, it's the 25th anniversary of Exclaim Magazine still, right? It is the 25th year for Exclaim. I don't know, round of applause for Exclaim. Uh, and we have one issue left, which I am uh, not working on now. I've been listening to the everybody yes, here. So. Yes, yes. Uh, but it'll be out in a couple of weeks, um, and then uh, on to 26. Yeah. Which is exciting. We're not stopping. No, no, no. Just yeah, you not, keep going. It's yeah. not just like, okay, we'll, we'll, yeah. Exclaim.ca so, for more info. Uh, <laughs> so that's coming up. Yeah. Um, I had a question for Lido. As a white person with laundry, is there like a schedule thing? or uh, we, could, we could talk about it after the show. <laughs> Best for after the show, probably. Okay. Thank you, James. Rich? What should I say? What, uh, what's in, what was the question? Oh, again? No, sorry. Yeah, well, there's one thing you're supposed to talk about. One thing you think oh, we should be talking uh, about yeah, more. I, about. The thing that I, I think we should be talking about, about all of the shitty men, um, is that, that generally I've found in my experience that uh, putting the fandom impulses that we all have in women is uh, almost always uh, rewarding and almost never... Uh, disturbing and That's terrible true. when news comes out. I've, I've really only had to reevaluate my relation, my fandom relationship with one woman in my entire life. So, uh, Azalea Banks. Oh. oh, yeah, that makes sense. But, I you know, yeah. I, I still can't not, I love broke with expensive taste. I don't care. Right. <laughs> but anyway. I love uh, Azalea Banks. She yeah, I'm just support. saying, like, she's sometimes, she it's support. like, ooh. She needs support. She's sure. broken. She, is, she needs support. She's some mental health things perhaps she needs or, support yeah. and she's a pawn and yeah. sometimes we forget that because Kanye oh, poor Kanye mental health he thinks he's a god he's a god but he's a genius look at the shoes he's given us Azealia <laughs> nothing zero also can we talk about Madonna we don't have time to talk about Madonna right now. <laughs> come to my house, everyone. Come to my house tomorrow. Bring your laundry over to Lido's house, and you can talk about Madonna. That's going to be fun. <laughs> Cone-shaped bras in the washing machine and whatnot. Anyway, Rich, uh, I'll, I'll be hand quick. Wash those. Uh, yeah, I, I've got this new record. It's called The Great Blue Harn. I have it here. Oh. Uh, it features Hoxley Workman and Kevin Bright. I'm super proud of it. Really and you good. can learn more about me at friendlyrich.com. And, and is there one thing you think we should be talking about? I, I said it earlier. Uh, bond with someone you don't get along with over Swiss Chalet. Bring it. Very bring cool. it. Bring the love. Bring the love. I don't like no, this. No, no applause over the Swiss Chalet. Ah, <laughs> oh, piss. Well, your, your applause sign is kind of a bizarre yeah, It's snapping. a silent jazz snap. A We're, We're in the Transac. We're in the Transac. Oh, yeah, that's true. Fucking right. respect right, the Southern right. Cross Lounge. Okay. All right, Sarah? Cool. Um, I guess wrong. check out my stand-up album, Trouble in Paradise, on iTunes. It's so much fun, uh, and you'll <laughs> like it, maybe. Um, call me subjective. Um, and then I guess I think everybody should talk about their feelings with a Z. All right. The feelings with a Z? Is that what you said? That's the most Canadian thing I've ever heard. Right at the right to the end. I know. I don't know how to express myself. You're right. <laughs> this whole time, I'm like, uh, 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 uh. like it's we're conditioned to have a hard time. You so are there you go. The, I'm learning a lot tonight. You are one of the funniest people I've ever encountered, Sarah. I really am glad. Thank you so you much for having show. me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I like it. I like you guys. Yeah. Lido. Um. There <laughs> are. Your son CDs. is moaning. I think. Yeah. In the front row. Are you done? He's probably so bored. He's. He sees this every day. He's like over it. Yeah. Um, there's like a CD of the album that won the prize, and I'm working on the 
We, I have it in my bag, but I'm gonna go so you won't get it here. So <laughs> go online. What do you mean? You have one copy? I have like some in my bag. You can, does anyone want a copy of La Papessa before Let's you go? Let's all share it. There's uh, somebody, a couple of people raising their hands. Get hand. it online, and you'll get it in a package in in your house. And um, and I'm working on some other stuff. I'm just whatever. I we should talk about we should talk about murder and missing indigenous women more. Okay. Yeah. Right. Hers is better than mine. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Uh, that's our show. I just want to plug myself here. Please listen to my podcast, Creative Control of Vishkana, which this episode will be on next week if you want to relive this experience. Uh, what else is going on? Yeah, it's on podcast platforms everywhere is what I wanted to say. And uh, I'd like to thank my sponsors, not Swiss Chalet. Here we go. Here we Fresh go. Books, Hello Fresh Canada, Pete's Trocadero, The Bookshelf, Planet Bean Coffee, and Granddad's. Donuts. donuts. Which rich you like. You know? I've pounded just a few Granddad's <laughs> Donuts. <laughs> Wonderful donuts. Okay. Bowling Ball really likes Granddad's <laughs> Donuts. Thanks to Long Winter. <laughs> Thanks to all of you for being here. We'll see you next time. Good night, everybody. Yeah.